Ghost of Yote star is a woke activist? Sweet Baby Inc. employee admits goal is burning the game's industry to the ground? Ubisoft delays Assassin's Creed Shadows to 2025? And once again, Ubisoft is under pressure to sell the company amidst their failures. Welcome back to Fan TV, where we love to dissect the latest video game disasters in this woke video game industry, while it's enjoying some slice of life moments from nerd culture. If you happen to enjoy what we do here, level up your support by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. It may or may not unlock a bonus piece of free DLC content that I guarantee you do not want to miss at the end of this video. Erica Ishii. So you can see her tweets, very political, very divisive, and the type of stuff people don't want to see. A whole lot of virtue signaling, her saying various political things, even promoting the American Democratic Party and uh, sharing a tweet and signal boosting a tweet that is encouraging people to vote and raise funds for Kamala Harris and all these other things. You know an activist when you see it, and this raises a lot of red flags for people when it comes to a video game, something that's supposed to be entertainment, and you have someone who is mixing their personal opinions and political opinions with their business account. Screenshot's been floating around with some of her greatest hits. Let's read through it. So this first one says, also can't help but notice the article focused mostly on the mechanics of our game and not which Pokemon is most effable. Oh, pause which we spend far more time on in that episode, but fine, I guess I'll be the one to just keep up, keep us focused up on the important questions. So this is the type of stuff, uh, a, a statement here that a lot of games journals would cancel you for normally, but because she says it, it's stunning and brave. But wait, there's more. Here's another one saying, abolish the police. It is unconscionable to allow this racist institution that terrorizes the citizens they are sworn to protect. Abolish the police. Crack is cheap. You know, one thing I'll never understand is why do video game companies keep hiring people that hate their audiences? This Erica individual, based on their tweets, is clearly an unhinged woke lunatic, spouting dangerous rhetoric such as defund the police. I mean, Sucker Punch, do you guys realize that there is a very large majority of the population that doesn't take too kindly to such rhetoric? And having such an extreme individual associated with your game can end up costing you guys unnecessary bad press that could have easily been avoided. And it's not surprising that people have already written off this game as woke because we are familiar with the telltale signs or the red flags that ultimately lead to the demise of a beloved video game. And you know what's funny? Gamers have been preaching for years, keep politics out of our video games. But activists like Erica kept pushing the envelope to the point whereby they created a politically charged atmosphere surrounding video games, such that even the average consumer is now forced to pick up his proverbial political pitchfork and torch in order to stand up against the desecration of video games. You wanted politics in your video games, well now you got it. You have a hyper aware, politically charged consumer base that will be hyper vigilant when it comes to spotting the red flags in your games. And if they happen to see something they don't agree with, they will gladly subscribe to the famous newsletter that goes, if you don't like it, don't buy it. Now personally for me, call me naive, but I'm still going to give Sucker Punch a chance. But of course, as a wise man once said, keep your expectations low and you will never be disappointed. That's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous to say that. This is like a vast looking game. I think Ubisoft has done a really, really good job, by the way. You're a victim. Mm. I just lost my job. Can you tell me a joke to cheer me up? What's the difference between you and a large pizza? I don't know. What? A large pizza can feed a family. Sweet Baby Inc. employee admits goal is burning games industry to the ground. What is this? A Sweet Baby Inc. presentation resurfaced. I'm a narrative designer and sensitivity reader with a company called Sweet Baby Inc. Cool, but why am I here? Just so we're clear, this is a real slide. We want cooler stories, a safer world, burning the game industry to the ground. Why are you the way that you are? And then... The sweet baby employee brings out an easy target, someone who is incapable of writing inclusive stories and thus needs the help of someone like Sweet Baby Inc. One of the greatest filmmakers and storytellers of our time, Quentin Tarantino. Because in my work, I meet a lot of Tarantinos. As an auteur, Quentin Tarantino feels like someone who grasps after edginess when they don't understand that growth, it also comes from joy. He holds a no pain, no gain kind of mentality that I think is unshakably rooted in white supremacist patriarchal values. Hate Come on now, dawg. Come on, man. 
You know, it's honestly not that hard to believe that people who have this warped political mindset produce poor products. Now, I don't know this for certain, but I'm willing to put money that in a world that is ruled by Sweet Baby Inc., the games industry, movie industry, and music industry would not exist. Because there is no way in hell that a mind that has been corrupted and twisted with such a pathology can possibly produce something that people could love and enjoy. I'm not upset with y'all because because I know you're mentally ill. What? Oh man, they hit my boy with the Joe Biden bullets. <laughs> my boy started seeing things. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true and international effort to pressure. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck the shit out of you, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Aw, this boy started moaning. Why are you gay? Hmm? Dare mo inayu da ga. Kore wa. Dou shitan da? of Japan. A few moments later <laughs> So Ubisoft's apology letter reads Dear players Assassin's Creed Shadows is a dream project for us. Finally bring the series to feudal Japan with many features developed with our community in mind such as parkour or the renewed stealth brought by new technology, all set in a beautiful and immersive world. This is an ambitious addition to the franchise, a rich experience that can be lived through the eyes of two unique protagonists. Ha! Gay! But we realize we need more time to polish and refine the experience, pushing further some of our key features. As such, we've made the decision to postpone the release date to February 14, 2025. The game will release on a broad range of platforms including Steam at launch. Additionally, pre-orders will be refunded and all future pre-orders will be granted the first expansion for free. We understand this decision will come as disappointing news, especially to those who've been waiting patiently for an Assassin's Creed game inspired by Feudal Japan. But we sincerely believe this is in the best interest of the game and ultimately your experience as a player. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Guys, we are watching history unfold before our very eyes. Ubisoft has never delayed an Assassin's Creed game. That should tell you that the situation behind closed doors is really serious. I mean guys, Ubisoft cannot afford another Star Wars Outlaws flop because if they do, it could potentially lead to the foreclosure of the studio. But what do you guys think? Is there any way that Ubisoft can salvage this impending doom that is Assassin's Creed Shadows? <laughs> I love the game. I love the hustle, man. What is he aiming at? Guys, I'm not gonna lie, man. I think From Software has some of the most advanced NPCs out there, guy. Prove me wrong. Little over four years ago, Ubisoft was trading at nearly 90 euros. Nine zero euros. And four years and seven months later, here we are. Nine euros. That means that the company has shed 90% of its total market capitalization. And right now, 
as this continues on. This is going to make Ubisoft worth probably less than $1 billion on the open market Damn. by the end of trading today. Things like that lead to this. An activist investor pushing for the sale of Assassin's Creed maker Ubisoft has gathered support from 10% of the French video game publisher's shareholders. Guys, guys, do you guys realize how serious the situation at Ubisoft is, guys? I mean, to have an investor convince other investors to sell the company, that could only mean one thing. It means that the investors have gone to the point whereby they are so afraid that the company is going to shut down that they are convincing everybody else to sell their shares while their shares still have some worth in order for them to get some money. Because if the company goes into foreclosure or if the company is uh, liquidated or something like that, that means that every single asset, whatever your share is worth, it's frozen. And if it's frozen, that means you're not getting your money. <laughs> Ubisoft is really in a bad situation, guys. He ain't lying. One more thing. Thief! You won't get away with this! Stop right there, criminal scum! Hey, sir, how's it going? Nobody breaks the law on my watch! What was the problem? I'm confiscating your stolen goods. Now pay your fine! Oh, I don't have that much money. Or it's off to jail. Well, maybe if I can figure out another form of payment? Then pay with your blood! We must stay focused, brothers. We must stay focused.